Okay, yeah. Page Kufnu Hey. I have phenomenal insights on this page because we are here, are here quite some time. And um, <clears throat> we'll start right on top. Although we already learned it and discussed it, but he has to introduce it to what, what follows. <clears throat> Effectively, in principle, we are learning the phenomenon, phenomenon of, of creation. <laughs> creation is clearly only a, a divine capability exclusively. We are identifying certain supreme qualities in creation. Something that creation, of course, is not within the capacity of any of anything else, of any other creature. But nonetheless, it behooves us to understand the, the wonders that creation represents. And the, <clears throat> the principal wonder of creation is that the created being is nothing but a created being, which means to say that it does not have a presence, but for what the creator provides it with. And yet, it becomes ultimately almost totally self-oriented. <clears throat> and it's in its own mind, in its own self-identity, it is completely independent of anything. And the question is, what is this? How can it be? What does this tell us about the creation and the creator? Since this is a big focus here in the mind, mind we might as well kind of develop it a little bit to recognize the, pheno the phenomenal impossibility of it. Phenomenal, you said impossibility. Yeah, the impossibility. Said impossibility. <laughs> but I just have a question. You said creation is is independent of anything. What do you mean? You, what you just said it. You said in, creation is independent of anything, right? But what what does that mean? What 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 is the point in this? But, my my question to you is doesn't it doesn't it depend on the creator? Oh. <laughs> Mainly. Okay, I know that I'm going to be misunderstood. The creation is of course dependent on the creator. Okay. It has absolutely no means of being, but not only for the fact that the creator created it, but the creator maintains it. Okay. The phenomenal aspect is please listen carefully, is not the the the, fa the factual reality, the fact reality it is completely dependent on the creator. Mm. Okay. No way, don't run away. Listen. Excellent. It's completely dependent on the creator. 
the phenomenal thing in that we are to be identifying, the mind is identifying is, in the, in despite the fact that it's completely dependent on the creator, in its own self-orientation, it is a completely standalone entity. Okay. Okay. It has no connection to anything. It does not answer to anyone. I can make my own choices and, and, and um, I don't have to coordinate it with the will of my creator. This is the reality. This is the question. How can that be? You're here in this house. This house is owned by a person who is your host. This house was not built by him, was not made by him. This house stands on its own. Once you put the, 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 the things on the table, it stands on its own. Yet, you would not dare start thinking, taking things apart. Because how do you violate the will of the one who put it together? Even though you put it together, and it stand, a table stands on its own on the four legs. It's independent of the person who put it down. Nonetheless, you would not dare start moving it around. Because he put it down, he provided it. How then is in, in the creation, which has a much deeper relationship to the creator, in that even after it is created, it is completely dependent on the creator to maintain it. It's as if we have a table right here, yet the table has four legs. However, the table stands only because two people are holding it up. One on this side, one on that side. They're holding it up very well, and you can see that they're holding it up. Would you come over and start pushing the table around? When you can see hey, the table stands on the table and stand, the rubber is being held, held up. The creation of the world is precisely that way. It has no standing of its own whatsoever. And here is the, the phenomenal additive of this phenomenon. Yes, it is being held up by the creator every instant, not only held up, but made, made to be, and yet, in its orientation, I'm standing on my own. And I exist on my own. This is what the Rabbi is talking about. How do we understand this? Having said that, I have to add another notch of this as usually it happens. Who says we understand it? We don't understand it. It happens, and we are perplexed by it, and, and we don't understand it, so who says we don't understand it? The answer is, that if we did not understand it, we'd feel in, in disarray. We could not approach it in any rational manner. This is a very confusion, right? So that means out of line. Out of line. It's like nothing we were confused. confused. Yeah, the, yeah, not confused. Out of line. Out of line. There is no say there, no order to it. <clears throat> Being that we do not feel disarrayed in the world. That means that for some, in some way, 
we make sense of what we see. If it didn't make sense, we couldn't sit quietly and relate and, and unusual. We would be disarray. At least we are making sense of it. If we are making sense of it, and this is the, the principle we discussed, a human being, human being has intelligence, everything that he that he relates to, everything that he <coughs> practices, experiences, finds its way in his mind. Otherwise, he could not stay calm and, and, and in, in his presence. <clears throat> and here we have this phenomenal thing. <clears throat> we are aware of this. And we are aware of this miracle, miraculous phenomenon. And yet we are we are completely at, at ease with it. We are completely okay with it. And that's a question. How can we be completely okay and calm with it when we see something that that might, we cannot explain at all? <clears throat> something that occurs in a very intricate, intricate, com com complicated manner, and there's nothing that holds it together. And we feel calm, calm about it. We feel quite at ease with it. The answer is that we, in our orientation, our understanding, understand two things in this, in this phenomenon. Number one, it is not standing on its own. It is being maintained. In, this, in order that the, that the creator wants it to be. While at the same time, the creator is completely hidden from it. We only see the effect of what he wants, not of his presence at all. That is the, the issue, that, the issue that, that is the principle that is being discussed over here. How can the creator affect the creation in such an intricate and orderly fashion and not be identified with it and, and recognize its presence? And the answer is that the creator's effect upon the creation, despite the fact that it is total and it maintained in every detail, you don't see him at all. How can it be? He maintains it from a much higher perspective than we can recognize. I mean, this is what's called <coughs> the idea of Mubdalas Be'erech. The Mubdalas Be'erech, a knowledge that is this distant in proximity. Be'erech means proximity. It is of a completely different sense of what this what is happening here. B 
we discussed the Magdala Be'erach in many which ways. It's, it's inevitable that there's always some other notch that can be added to it. We did Magdala Be'erach means like this. In our own life, we have many different levels of value of orientation. On the lowest level, the worldly involvement that we can relate to is only is when, the, when it is <laughs> has to have a certain qualities. We cannot be uh, we cannot function and, and, and act in a swamp. It's also part of the world. But we cannot function in a swamp. We cannot function in any in, in a ditch in anything that's dirty. Then there is a higher state. We cannot function anything that is disorderly. Even if it's good, it's disorderly. Also, it's disrupting. Ultimately, we cannot function in an, in a, in an environment that we don't understand what this is about. So we can discuss it in all kinds of details, but it's not necessary. I'm sure everyone <coughs> recognizes the very simple bent principles <coughs> that whatever environment he functions, he understands the 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 nuances of every aspect. He understands why there's a policeman on the corner. He knows that the policeman is not there to catch him in thievery. He's directing traffic. In any case, he is not concerned about it. These are all things that we readily recognize, understand within in our environment. That is a must. We cannot function unless we understand certain aspect in our environment that allows us to, to function normally. So now we have a, a, a perplexing phenomenon. There's a whole world. Sunrise and sunset different weather patterns and it's happening in front of our own eyes. How is it that we can live with this totally at ease and in peace? When rain comes, we just take the umbrella out. We don't say, what's going on over here? The wind blows, we just button up a little bit tighter. What is, what is our understanding of the environment in which we function, although it is so varied and so constantly changing?
And of course, the, the answer is, and there has to be an answer, something because a human being must know, must un, can function only in an environment that he can be limited. He knows very well that this is all very orderly. There's a winter and there's a summer and there's a spring and there's a fall. And he knows exactly is the, is the denominations, it's in its duration, and eventually it's going to, from day it's going to come night, from night comes day. This knowledge, even though we are in the world, but this knowledge is also supported by our knowledge that this world was a divine creation. This is a divine creation. And therefore all the different variations in this creation have been planned by the creator. We all know the psukim after the marble. After the marble, the marble put the whole world in disarray. There were no seasons in, 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 in precise denominations. <clears throat> the Noah came out of the table on the, of the, of the ark and he brought a cord. That made a statement in the world that the human being actually can define, identify the, the significance of this creation. And that's a, that's a case. I'm gonna maintain this creation in a manner that is compensate with the human lifestyle. It's not, it's not gonna be in this way. It's gonna be a winter and a summer, <coughs> a day and a night. <coughs> None of these None of these systems are ever going to go into this in this array. From a natural perspective, it can happen anything. But because the rabbis and the creator says this is not going to happen, he maintains it in order. And that order is in order to facilitate <laughs> to facilitate the human orientation <laughs> that the human being should feel comfortable and he should be able to rely and to trust the environment in which he lives. How do we know that? It's a reposic. Hashem identified this cord, this cord says, ah, this is what I want. And I'm not going to destroy, disrupt it. And the human being requires not only that it should be orderly, it requires also that you should be able to, to know ahead of time. It's going to be night in two hours, it's going to be day in, in, in 10 hours. And, and the, the whole system is something which a human being has to be able to orient himself in, in an orderly fashion. He can plan for it. All this is inherent in the creation. Now, <clears throat> this is all the inherent creation. When we take a little reckoning and see how not, the natural world operates, and what are the effects 
that maintain this orderliness, we can readily see that the chances of it going in this array are very great. We have all experienced many times a deluge, a rain that we don't say, is this ever going to stop? Where's this water coming from? There's no land. And there's not, to speak, a natural limit how long the rain should go. Or how long the night should be, how long the day should be. Therefore, what enables us to function in the world and plan our, 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 our intent, our, our future, on the basis of what we, 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 we project that it should be, that is because there is a, there's, the creator said it's going to be all of the statement of the creator is nothing to do with the natural world. Everyone knows the psukim that I'm referring to. These are psukim in the Torah that say after the marble. Exactly. This is what maintains the order in the world. Being that the whole world is maintained by this divine command, promise, plan. Otherwise on its own, it can go in this way at any minute. Thus, we should follow that we should be cognizant of the presence of the creator all the time. We see it on every, on every step of the way. And yet, we can be completely oblivious to it. Be oblivious to the extent that we, but we break our mind and say, okay, what's a natural force that made this? What controls this? Completely dismissing this reality that says in the term. How can this be? This is what we're learning about. If we focus in and understand the cause for this, the source of this, of this thinking process, we understand that yes, indeed, the world is a constant flux. Day brings night and night brings day. Summer brings winter, winter brings night. There's a constant, a constant a change, a changeover. And this changeover is not sun, it could, it could, there's a constant change, change. Winter does not come suddenly as winter. It comes, it comes slowly in its orderly fashion. From, from, from fall to, to winter. Therefore, we who are intelligent, or who experience this entire process, should be keenly aware of the hand of the creator that leads the creation all the time. In, in cognizance of the flux? Yeah. Because it's ordered. Because it's ordered and because it's <coughs> It's it's very it varies all the time. It varies all the time. 
and it could be in all kinds of different ways. As a matter of fact, Ar Chachomim, because we have Hashem Rabbateira and we have we have directions how we should live in this world, and we know that clearly that this is that the Rebbe is is Ganyan. Therefore, Ar Chachomim established different t- type of prayers to make him as a creator in the variation, the various variations that which we experience. We have in the morning we say Yetzer Oyer. At night we say Mari Marod. So I'm going to pose this, so to speak, point blank question. Do you experience that the intense dark because the Rebbe made it dark? Say it again. Do you experience that it comes dark because Rebbe Shem made it dark? Yes. Or became becomes light because Rebbe Shem makes it light? You experience that? Okay. Stand up, Yitzhak. Let us look at you. <laughs> you want to hit me down? No, I don't know. I just want to... I want to I want to observe this, 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 this the spiritual land. <laughs> when I ask you, when is going to get dark? When you answer, when God likes it dark, that's, what going to that's not the answer. It's just when the sound is set, and the sound is scheduled set at this and this hour, that's when it's going to get dark. That's calling your own bluff. Who makes the sun set? <laughs> That's logical. Who makes the sun set? But I know it ahead because I know this the cycle. I, I I'm smarter than that. I know this this the solar cycle. Oh. You're smarter than that too. Yeah, but I'm smarter than that too. <laughs> but I I didn't get fooled by you saying that you know it. <laughs> <laughs> This is precisely what the Rebbe is saying. In reality, we, as intelligent human beings, not only intelligent because we can figure things out, but we live with our intelligence. The world is real to, our, real to us only because our, our mind identifies with it. We want to live in, 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 in the world. Let me explain these words. Primarily, we're interested in our own well-being. We want to be not hungry and not cold and not hungry and all of these things. But this is not what's, what's really preeminent in our mind. When we wake up in the morning, it is not due to the fact that we feel good. We get up in the morning because it's a beautiful world that we want to participate. This is not our own experience of, from ourselves that keeps us going. Because if it were our own experience that keeps us going, then we would say, I'm comfortably in bed. Who, who, who needs to get up? And yet we don't, we don't stay in bed. We don't want to miss up, miss out the the, the what comes with day, with the world. Because that is the reality in which we, we function, which we, which we relate to. I'm all confused here. You're confused? Absolutely. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. No kidding, let me see you stand up. What? Let me see you stand up. All right. <laughs> okay. How are you standing? <laughs> He was your father, really. No, how do you stand? You're confused. I don't, I don't know. Which is east and which is west? What are you confused about, Tom? Because Yitzhak, I think, I think he is sincere about what huh? he's saying. I think Yitzhak is sincere about what he's saying, that he knows that the God made night and night makes day, and you also are. 
yet you tell him that it's a son and this and that. And then right after you say, look, you wake up in the morning, not because you like, you know, comfortable or uncomfortable, you wake up because of a call of godly calling. Okay. So in the All right, well, I, I got you, I got you. Abram, this is why I always say we have to focus in and understand what we're talking about. We know it, but we don't actually experience it. He was says, Murgis. Right. Don't experience This is not uh, the basis on which we function. But we certainly know it. Okay. What? What? 721. I'm sorry? 721. This means what? Another two, three minutes. Two, three minutes. Let me at least establish the, the address from here. All right. <clears throat> so on this page again, I'm just going to go through quickly. The Rebbe brings in a new dimension to this phenomenon. <laughs> phenomenon is that everything comes from Hashem, and yet <clears throat> the, the 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 created entities in the world are not aware of it. They seem to be completely self-oriented. How can it be? This is the reality of the Rebbe's point. Of view. How can it be? They're constantly maintaining the line from, from, from Hashem. Without that, there would be no order at all, no presence at all. And yet, in their own orientation, self-orientation, they're totally unaware of it. As I said in our example, you're sitting here at this table. The table was brought here by human beings and this, everything was set up by human beings, but you're totally unaware of it. As far as you're concerned, the table fell down from sky. How can, how can one be so totally, totally un oblivious to the obvious? This is the question. The obvious answer is that this obvious phenomenon is effectuated, is brought to be by a by a force that is beyond the human conception. It's called Koyach Mugdo. The table was brought here not by human hands, not by anything that brings the table down. By divine will, that should be a table over here. Then it's completely out of, out of reach with his own intelligence. This is how the whole phenomenon of the world cycle is viewed, is perceived by us. Despite the fact that we know the, the natural order and all that, ultimately, the reason the world it functions the way it is is because God said this is the way it's going to be. And he stays moved, though. What? He stays moved, though, from it. He, st he stays, you say, okay, he, like you say, he moved stays down. moved, though. He, stay, he stays that way. It's by his will that everything is, and he stays like, like that. Like, no, no, you don't understand moved. Don't, don't, don't paraphrase, not yet. Okay, yes, sir. The, 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 That's broadening out. The point is, <clears throat> the world was in disarray after the mouth, total disarray. And the Rebbe says, this is not going to happen again. Why? Because I appreciate the human 
the human service and human good deeds. Therefore, I'm not going to disrupt the order in the world. How many of us recognize that the order in the world is maintained by human, by, by appreciation of the human being? We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't relate to that at all. It will be maintained because the world has to be orderly. But the Taylor says, no. By Yorah Hashem Mishriach HaNichelach. Then the Mishra says, it's going to stay orderly. We don't understand, realize, every time we get up in the morning, we say, Moi Daniel from Mech, we watch Megalos. And we get up, and we start and burn film. We start doing shachris, and mincha, and mal. This is what keeps the world in order. So okay. Davening is longer today. So I'm sorry? Davening is longer because it's worth Okay, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Same thing. Just yeah, I got it. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.